DNI Coast Division, Cam Anderson. Yes, sir, this is Sergeant Nesser with the KMOT crew. We need access, please. Okay, are you secure or under any type of duress? I am secure and I am under no duress. Thank you, sir. You are entering the Codes Division for the 91st Strategic Missile Wing at Monad Air Force Base. The codes used to launch and guide nuclear missiles are generated here, one of only eight such rooms in the Air Force. Codes and security are synonymous in this place. You don't get in unless you have a need-to-know status, something normally reserved for officers. To get in, you must pass through two locked doors, separated by a short corridor known as a containment area. And once inside, you go nowhere alone, not even if you work here. No loan zones and the two-man concept are mandatory practices. Where one person goes, another must follow. Also, as a security measure, the crew that works here is divided into A and B groups. Code information is split into two parts, with each part controlled by a group. An A person will never handle B code information. It takes two people, in fact, to even get into the vault, one person having to authenticate and verify through the uh, security police over the phone lines before we can even open up the vault door. Locks are a common sight in the code room. Nothing is left open or open to chance. A strategically placed mirror, for example, helps ensure there are no blind spots in the room. That's so if somebody goes around the corner of the room, we can still see what they're doing because there are critical equipment around the corner of the room that requires two person. And that gives us a chance to be working at the desk and still maintain visual contact with the individual that went around the corner. The heart of the D09 code room is the vault a hardened concrete structure protected against any electromagnetic interference. There are no windows and only one entrance through a massive steel door. This is a, uh, a Class A vault area. And one way in, one way out, and that's through the vault door. When we close and lock it, that's it. Inside the vault is the computer and the computer tapes used in generating missile codes. Two particular codes are extremely important, the enable and launch codes. Put simply, the enable code cocks the trigger on the missile. The launch code pulls the trigger. The code data generated here is taken out to the missile fields for installation into each missile's computer and guidance systems. To ensure the correct information goes in, since we generated it, we computer generate an eight-digit number that is compared to the computer out there. That computer also generates an eight-digit number the team calls us, we compare the two numbers, and that's how we know that the right data was loaded. And there are no excuses for any lapses in judgment. All 18 people assigned to the codes division participate in the Personnel Reliability Program, or PRP. They watch each other for signs of anything that could hurt their job performance. Pressures at home, illness, medications. We want people that are healthy and well back here, not somebody that's thinking about uh, a problem at home, uh, whether it's money or whatever, or they're sick. We just don't want them working back here. We want people that are, that are awake and doing the job and concentrating fully on it. Because these men generate the codes necessary to pull the nuclear trigger, security and accuracy are paramount. Security to make sure the wrong person doesn't get the codes needed to launch a missile. Accuracy to make sure the codes used actually do launch a missile when needed. In this business, there are no second chances. Keith Darnay reporting.